Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, we are going through tough times and I am sure even this shall pass. The COVID-19 pandemic has redefined the way we live, conducts our life, defined ourselves as a faith community and the way we are the church. The new virus has almost locked down the entire world and it has affected the way we live and the way we worship and it will continue to impact us for many more years to come. The world economy is starting to see one of its worst recessions. There is literally no sector of life that is unaffected including faith and religion. There is pain everywhere, death everywhere, disease everywhere, panic everywhere. One of the Bible verses that help us to respond to such situation of gravity is Romans chapter 8 verses 37 to 39. Preceding verses of this passage celebrates that God is always present and always willing to help in times of need. Verse 26, that all things work together for good for those who love God. That if God is for us, it really doesn't matter who is against us. And that there is no power strong enough and circumstance dire enough to separate us from the love of God. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Could oppression or anguish or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? Christians of that time were subjects of persecution from Jews and Romans alike. Famine implies hunger and a hungry person can think of little but good food. Hunger was a key element in Jesus' temptation, Matthew chapter 4, verses 2 to 4. Romans used nakedness to shame men who were being crucified. So it implies violent death. Paul had suffered many of these, and they had not destroyed his faith. He says, For I am persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels nor principles, nor things, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing will be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ our Lord. Death, nor life, death is fearsome in its inevitability and finality, but life can be fearsome too, painful, grinding, but Christ gives us a hope of eternal life, a life that is both enduring and blessed, lived in the presence of and love of God. Christ also helps us to see the slings and arrows of this life from a higher perspective that diminishes their scale and makes them seem less terrible. Angels nor principalities. We are surprised to see angels in this list because we think of angels as God's messengers, but there are also angelic forces opposed to God. Revelation chapter 12 verse 7. Rulers can refer either to spiritual or earthly powers. Consider the host of tyrants who have reigned in the past century and millions of people, often their own subject, who have died at their hands. Paul assures us that where rulers might separate us from life in this world, they cannot separate us from the love of God, that life that he offers. Things present, not things to come. We are surprised not to see things past on this list because people are often gripped by events of the past, whether good or bad, and saddled by guilt from past sins. Paul focuses instead on things present, and things to come. The challenges that we face in the present and trials that we fear in the future. It can be painful to read the terrible things that newspaper reports, but Christ assures us that God is moving history towards a glorious goal instead of a dismal end. Height or depth, it could be a reference to the heights of space and depths of oceans meaning that we have nothing ultimate to fear from comets above or totonic forces below. 
or it could refer to the heights and depths of our emotions. Meaning that neither our great joys nor our great sorrows can separate us from God. Any other creating things. If Paul were to try to be comprehensive regarding everywhere that we might fear, the list would go forever. So he ends the list with the catch, all the phrases that assures us that nothing, absolutely nothing, will be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus the Lord. Whatever be the contest we are in, the other Roman says, no, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. It seemed that the circumstances could defeat us. It could seem that economic slowdown could defeat us. It could seem that the medical condition could defeat us, but the writer of Romans says, No, nothing, nothing, because we shall be conquered in God. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing will be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. It is here that the Easter song of hope becomes extremely meaningful in our lives, particularly in the following days. I would like to draw your attention especially to the hymn, because he lives the lyrics of which is gaining more and more relevance to the present situation. God sent his son. They called him Jesus. He came to love, heal and forgive. He lived and died to buy my pardon. An empty grave is there to prove my Savior lives. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Because I know he holds the future. And life is worth the living, just because he lives. The love of God which revealed in Jesus, who is our God. Even as we meditate cross these days, we see that the extravagance of God's love poured out on the cross of Calvary for you and me. We will remain through the holy Saturday and then see the morning light of Easter. All these are the just manifestations of the love of God, dearly beloved in Christ. We might be going through great difficult situation. We might be going through great hard times. We might be going through the situation of hopelessness. But the author of Romans tells, nothing can separate us from the love of God. That is Lord Jesus Christ. Wish you all a happy Easter. God bless you all. Amen.